which was more than a match being brought to the drawing room, Channel 9 took the viewer to the center of the pitch. He was now witness to some privileged moments, watching the captains toss the coin, and that exclusive interview which gave him access to the game plan. Any reason for the change of tactics? Uh, no, I think that um, we didn't do so well um, chasing yesterday. Um, I thought that, you know, with the weather being a little bit better, we can try something different. Greg Chappell, uh, the run of outs, has it uh, got you frustrated at all with your batting? I mean, have you ever felt like just walking out there and throwing the cue at everything? Yeah, I've thought about it, but uh, you, know, you try and stick to the principles that you've uh, stuck with over 10 or 15 years, and they've worked pretty well in that time. Kerry Packer's contribution was not limited only to the razzle-dazzle of television coverage. His World Series players were better paid than cricketers had ever been at any time in the history of the game. And this monetary revolution was to have a dramatic impact on Test cricket as well. We were never paid very well. And um, we always had to depend on the benefit and things like that, or, or handouts for that matter. And um, <clears throat> I made a conscious decision and um, for cricketers throughout the world, because once we had made that decision, the, the boards had to to, you know, come to their senses and, and think, well, you know, um, this, can, this can escalate. Um, we will have to do something. So hence, the England player who was getting probably 150 pounds a test match, eventually got 750. The increased monetary rewards and incentives inspired a complete change in attitude. Earlier on, players had considered one day cricket as a bit of a joke, an offshoot of the main thing. But gradually, a certain professionalism evolved, a new toughness. And the winner was the one who was the fittest and the most talented of the lot. The birth of new legends was inevitable. Vivian Richards and he's provided some marvellous entertainment here at the MCG today. He is said to epitomise the spirit of limited overs cricket. Viv Richards, acknowledged by some as a batting genius, born in the tiny island of Antigua, West Indies, he claims that the passion for cricket was passed on to him by his father. The start I, I personally feel you know, that did benefit, benefit me was having a father you know, who did play a lot of cricket for, for Antigua and also he played you know, cricket for the Leeward Islands and you know, having such influential father I think it did rub off, some did rub off and he did come out outdoors door with us at times and help us to, to, to try and play certain strokes right. You have had any kind of official coaching or it came out very naturally and very easily? We never really had any official coaching. Vivian Richards never needed any formal coaching either. The quickness of the eye, the use of feet, and more memorable innings than any contemporary batsman. Richards has a greater variety of strokes and dominates the limited overs matches like a colossus. Irrespective of the bowler, he treats them all with an arrogant disdain. And he's finished it off nicely with a six. If further proof was required of the supremacy of Vivian Richards, there was enough evidence on that last day of May 1984, England versus West Indies, Manchester. Viv Richards chose dramatic circumstances to hit the highest score in a one-day international. West Indies was staggering at 166 for nine when Richards cut loose. He scored 189 not out, an innings that included five sixes and 21 fours. Shot again, absolutely magnificent. Straight six this time. And that means that's been a magnificent six right over the top. That's going to be a two, all right. Is it going to be four? Yeah, it's just beaten uh, Fowler, racing round there, so there we are, hundreds down for the last wicket, 166 when they came together, it's moved on now to 268 with a ball left.
Three years later, Viv Richards made the highest individual score in a World Cup match. He hit 181 against Sri Lanka in the Reliance Cup of 1987. It was a devastating display of power cricket. Where has that gone? Gone miles in the sky, six over long off. Another six. A tremendous straight six. Which is on 141. Almost like a replay. It ended with a four. When the legendary tales of limited overs cricket are narrated, it is said they will largely revolve around the incredible achievements of Isaac Vivian Alexander Richards. calls himself a citizen of the world and since his test debut in 1966 Clive Lloyd has done nothing but endear himself to cricket lovers around the globe. He's doubtless most loved in his homeland the West Indies but in the last 20 years Lloyd has built a huge following all over the world. Magnificent hook shot out of the ground, superb shot there by Lloyd, the West Indian crowd on their feet. The West Indies' victory in the 1975 Prudential Cup final was shaped largely by the efforts of Clive Hubert Lloyd. His savage 102 against a powerful Australian attack was proof of his calibre as a superb batsman, a dangerous left-hander, a master of the one-day fixture. The crowd on their feet, and what a delightful exhibition this has been by Clive Lloyd. And for those who have followed his career, it was evident he had come a long way from humble beginnings in Georgetown, Guyana. I had an early sort of look at, 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 at cricket and, and cricketers and the way they behaved and you know that sort of thing. So um, it was inevitable that I would eventually play cricket because um, it was the only game that you know that was played quite regularly in the, um, in and around Georgetown. But Clive Lloyd's contribution was not just limited to his batting. He helped mould a West Indian team which dominated international cricket for almost a decade. A team which won the one-day Prudential World Cup twice in a row in 1975 and 1979. And this evening hoisted aloft the Prudential World Cup for the second time. 
it was nice, I think, to, 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 to have been brought up and played my cricket, you know, with such a man, you know, that up to this day I've still got the, the highest regards and respect for. I, I still call him these days as well, the captain. Towards the end of his career, Clive Lloyd had become an elder statesman of international cricket. Not surprisingly, his last test appearance was the stage for an emotional farewell. And every man and every lady in this ground cheering him to the middle. Well, Lloyd's gone for it. He's gone down the wicket and given that on a mighty slog. That's gone a long way. And Clive Lloyd out there continuing with those lusty drives of ease and that too bringing up his 50. Drives. Gone! Caught by border at cover. Driving on the up. Clive Lloyd's last innings in the Sydney Cricket Ground comes to an end, but what a fine luck it was. 72, driving at young McDermott, didn't keep it down, and opposing skipper Alan Border took the catch. And the end of a great career for the West Indies captain. 7,515 runs in Test cricket. 72 runs today for him. There are a lot of things flashing through his mind as he walks back to the pavilion for the very last time in Test cricket. Not the marshal there, just acknowledging not only the innings, but the fine career coming to an end. Probably a tear or two in the eyes of the big cat at the moment. The Australians, true sporting gesture there, just acknowledging the end of a fine career. If one innings was needed as evidence of the incredible talent of Kapil Dev Nikanj, the former Indian captain, it was played on 18 June 1983 at Tunbridge Wells in England. In the group qualifying match against Zimbabwe in the third Prudential Cup, India were reeling at 9 for 4, then 17 for 5, when Kapil Dev took charge. No television camera was there to record what was possibly one of the greatest innings played in the history of limited overs cricket. No film coverage documented for posterity. The match-winning 175 not out by Kapil studied with six sixes and 17 fours. I walked in and I just uh, talked to myself about... What were you talking to yourself about? I just said, I said, let's forget about one day cricket. I want to play 60 overs. Yes, I see. Yeah. That is the only... <clears throat> in my mind, I want to play 60 overs. I want to play 60 overs. I said at least 100 times to myself, I want to play 60 overs. There's no one day match. You consider that you're one of your best innings or the best innings in limited overs cricket? Looking at the situation, I would say the best inning. Two for 29, and when competition was fierce, the opposition powerful, Kapil Dave's bowling and fielding contributed in giving his team that certain edge. The edge which has allowed India to win major limited overs matches and tournaments. Kapil Dev, the skipper, at square leg, has taken it with consummate ease. It was very, very firmly struck. The border is gone. He was acknowledged as the pin-up star, the glamour boy of international cricket. No cricketer has so fired the imagination of his supporters the world over as the handsome all-rounder from Pakistan, Imran Khan Niazi. The Pakistan team were favourites to win the 1987 Reliance Cup, largely on the strength of Imran's personal ability. Imran, to the letter, and he's bowled in. There it goes, under the bat. His devastating opening spells have terrorised the best batsmen. But the one performance that Imran Khan will cherish was against India in Sharjah in April 1985, rated as his best limited overs performance. It was a display of hostile pace bowling. And on a clear sunny morning, Imran struck like a thunderbolt. He dismissed six Indian batsmen for 14 runs in 10 overs. India collapsed to a shocking 125 all out. And there's the first delivery to the deafening roar of approval of this packed stadium. There's an appeal for LBW and he's out! The 
first ball and sensation here at the Sharjah cricket ground. Sirikant facing Imran. That's up in the air. He could be gone out. And yes, he's gone. There's Nafeez for a catch behind and he's gone. Imran has struck again. Bang Sakar caught behind. He's going to be out caught and he's gone. Imran has struck again. Gavaska out caught behind. Playing away from his body. 34 for 4, India. Imran to Amarnath. <laughs> it's out. Fifth wicket gone. Amarnath bowled. He could be out caught and he's gone. A great, magnificent catch by the wicket keeper. What a tremendous catch by Ashraf and Imran has struck again to get his sixth wicket. In the volatile world of cricket, Imran established himself as a successful captain. A motivator who had captained his team by example. And that's a glorious shot from Imran. When it's coming around from cover point. Fields just inside the rope with two more. Pakistan won its first international tournament, the Australasia Cup, under his leadership in 1986. He's called the Little Master. His prolific run-getting ability allowed him to shatter nearly every world record in Test cricket. But his limited overs World Cup debut was disastrous. In 1975, at Lords, Sunil Manohar Gavaskar scored only 36 runs in 60 overs, an innings he would rather forget. Well, at 36 was, as I said, the, uh, the result of uh, me not really uh, getting mentally involved with, uh, with the limited overs uh, cricket. And uh, later on, as I sort of, uh, you know, became more relaxed with, with the five-day version, in the sense that I was doing fairly well in the five-day uh, five game. So I, got uh, used to the idea of the one-day game uh, being around as well. But it was not long before Sunil Gavaskar adapted to limited overs cricket. He learned fast and learned what it meant to improvise. The hike which is uh, when bowlers are mainly bowling in swingers, just put your left foot down and uh, try and connect and the ball goes anywhere from straight over the bowler's head to uh, with an inside edge uh, to deep fine leg, so long as it gets you runs. In the 1987 Reliance Cup match between India and New Zealand, the penultimate match of Gavaskar's career, the Little Master gave an extraordinary exhibition of a limited overs innings. A Hurricane 103 not out, rated by experts as one of the most complete one-day innings ever played. The batsman most likely to hit the first ball of a match for six is Krishnamachari Srikanth, the most hard-hitting opening batsman in the world today. Straight over the top. Has been to bowl short to him. And, uh, well, I was going to say, they made the mistake of pitching it up, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a half volley. Bad increase, despite the slow outfield, he stood his ground and said, man, that's four. 
and he was right. It's gone again. He's in great form today. Sukant hitting straight down the ground, races away to Wong on for four. He's gone again. That could be four more. It flies over cover point. But how does it feel to watch him go on the rampage from the other end of the wicket? I just try and enjoy his batting because, you know, he's so different. There's no point trying to tell him anything. And I get a very good view without any fears for the simple reason he very seldom hits the ball straight. <laughs> or if he does hit it, hit it straight, it's always up in the air. Mm. And I'm not that tall, so, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not worried. But I enjoy it. That's a more typical shot from Srikanth. And uh, Srikanth has now made his 1,000th run in limited overs internationals. A plunderer of any kind of bowling, Srikanth's daring improvisation has made him easily the most entertaining contemporary batsman. of limited overs cricket has produced a new breed of cricketer, the superstar in a glamorized world of cricket entertainment, legends whose deeds have enshrined them in cricket's Hall of Fame. <laughs>